focus of this video is on fixing shoulder pain as it is related to mobility and stability. Traditional rehab exercises focus on the isolation and strengthening of the main stabilizing muscles of the shoulder joint, that is the rotator cuff. The problem with this is that it assumes that something isn't strong enough. Rarely is this the case. You see, the rotator cuff can only function as well as you can stabilize and control the postural position of the shoulder blade. So if the shoulder blade isn't positioned correctly or doesn't move properly, the rotator cuff will never be able to work hard enough to stabilize the shoulder joint. Now the position of the shoulder blade is also based so, uh, strongly on how well you can stabilize and position the thorax properly, which in turn is based upon how well you can stabilize your pelvis. And for people who function in a, in a standing world, the hip plays an important part in this as well. So if anything in that kinetic chain isn't correct or not ideal, the end result over time will be shoulder pain. This video will utilize exercises in the five month developmental position, which is side posture. We're going to be connecting all the dots to help you develop a more functional, uh, more stable and a better, mo better mobility in your shoulder. Thank you. It is essential that you take time to set up your body correctly in the initial position for the exercise to be successful. Focus on creating good support and ideal alignment. In this exercise, the support side is the side that you are laying on. The upper and lower extremities provide the necessary support that your body pulls towards during the act of exercise. If the arm is too far forward, you'll be resting on the shoulder blade, not on the end of your humerus. Pull the arm back if necessary. Placing the support side hip at 90 degrees of flexion is ideal for activation of the gluteal muscles. However, you may have to position the hip higher or lower according to your anatomy and your ability to keep your pelvis and lower back neutral. Be sure that your weight is on the end of your thigh bone at the hip and not rolled back onto your buttock. The top side hip should be stacked right on top of the support side hip. Throughout the entire activation and active movement portions of this exercise, it is 100% necessary to maintain an ideal upright posture, keeping the diaphragm aligned and parallel to the pelvic floor. Most people are very unaware of their own bodies. People often say how difficult it is to hold something without losing something else. The strategy necessary for achieving stabilization through a kinetic chain requires self-awareness and the ability for you to connect and maintain a lot of body parts all at the same time. Creating a checklist of pushing through your support points, holding proper body alignment, and maintaining ideal core activation will help keep all of your dots connected. In this video, we recommend a checklist of five items that you will repeat over and over to ensure the best possible activation. Number one, start with activating the abdominal wall and generating ideal intra-abdominal pressure. Number two, pull your lower back and pelvis into a neutral position. Number three, Pull your spine long and straight. There should be no side bending or excessive curvatures. Number four, bring your head and neck into alignment. And lastly, number five will be bringing your rib cage in approximation to your shoulder blade.
Before you can begin any kind of exercise for your shoulder joint, you must first ensure that your shoulder blade is stabilized on your rib cage. This photo taken from the back shows the position of the shoulder blade prior to activation and stabilization of the kinetic chain. With the shoulder blade pulled away from the trunk, it is clear that the shoulder joint is not prepared for any type of exercise. The next photo shows how the shoulder blade becomes properly positioned when the kinetic chain is correctly activated. From the initial position, we're going to begin activating the kinetic chain, cre uh, creating stability from the hip through the abdominal wall, the thorax, the shoulder blade, and finally the shoulder joint. So we begin by bringing the head back into a neutral position. So you're going to be pulling your chin straight back like this. You also want to feel yourself growing out the top of your head, pulling your body this way. By pulling up, we are also creating a more centrated position of the shoulder blade. From here, we want to feel the shoulder pushing straight into the table, so we're lifting the rib cage up off this wood dowel. Now this, this movement isn't a side bending of the body, that would be a really bad pattern to develop, but instead what we're doing, again, is we're pushing the shoulder straight down into the table, lifting ourselves up like so. so Head pulls back, we're pulling up this way, we're driving the shoulder into the table. Now by doing this, I'm pulling my rib cage to my shoulder blade. We're creating stability between the thorax and the shoulder blade. Now the rotator cuff can begin to have something stable to pull from. I also need to create stability between my pelvis and my thorax by pulling up in the front a little bit so the pelvis is in a more neutral position and we want to generate intra-abdominal pressure in through here so doing the correct activation pulling out and feeling the abdominal wall fully activated now through this whole time while we're going to be moving you're going to go through that checklist all the way through to make sure that you're not losing stability in any part of the chain now my hand position is going to be utilizing the bicep and the tricep synergistically to pull the shoulder joint also in a stable position while we're moving. So from here, we're going to use this arm to reach. We're going to be using the bottom leg to create stability of the pelvis. The top leg is going to be reaching forward as well. I'm going to begin rocking forward and as I'm rocking forward I'm transferring weight from my shoulder joint towards my elbow. We don't want to collapse down, we want to stay upright. So I have to push my elbow into the, into the table as well. Now that's going to require activation of the tricep. But we don't want the elbow to open so the bicep has to function just as hard and, to, and when we create that balance activation, we're literally using the bicep and tricep like reins on a horse to steer the shoulder joint to be correct. From here, we continue reaching forward, keep pushing down. I'm pushing outwards with my hand and my body starts rolling forward. So now my pec is pulling my thorax towards my shoulder joint. We're gonna reach, pull, pushing down. I'm uprighting through my head, pulling up through my pelvis to create an uprighting position like this. From here, we're going to begin to rotate the thorax and come back down. While I'm in motion, I'm continually going through my checklist to make sure all my points of support, all my points of activation are working together synergistically so we don't fall apart. Now that whole movement pattern is pretty complicated, so instead of doing a complete movement, we can just break it down into, into functional pieces. So we begin by again pulling head back, head up, create activation through the abdominal wall, pressurize through here, push the shoulder down, and I can begin just, just holding that. If I want to add a little something to it, I can create phasic movement of the upper arm, which is challenging how well I can stabilize my bottom shoulder. I can do something similar with the top side leg, challenging stability through my support shoulder. When I feel like I have pretty good stability and motor control doing this, 
I can begin to create rolling patterns. Only when I feel like I have enough strength and motor control can I begin to completely operate myself. Like so. That's the basic movement of the five month side posture exercise, uh, finishing it in a low oblique position.